You mean these? Y you want me to read these? Uh, are you sure? I mean, this has only been sitting on my shelf for five years, so I, I guess I might as well. So the Simon Snow trilogy is a thing, and I had a Barnes & Noble gift card, so I treated myself. These are, uh, two real thick boys sandwiched with, uh, a normal-sized book, so this is gonna take forever, but I will finally read the Simon Snow trilogy by Rainbow Rowell. In general, I just wanted to finally dive into this and see what the hype is about because I'm curious now. I just, I really want to know. Because, like, this started in Fangirl, which was about a girl who like writes fiction and this was the fiction she was writing and it's like kind of a parody of another wizard series but like not i don't know let's just read it real quick disclosure i am very aware of rainbow rowell and the issues that people have had with her book eleanor and park having very racist asian stereotypes and i do just want to address that very quickly because i am reading these books i just do want to make it clear that i very much abhor the fact that it is a thing and I do not wish to let anyone believe that I am ignoring it or refusing to acknowledge it. So this video is 100% about the content of these books. You know, nobody asks, but in case you want to know a random fun fact about me, um, for the past year and a half, I have not gone into a restaurant if I can help it. Like they still have curbside pickup basically everywhere and I've been doing that. So I'm eating noodles and company and break it into this baby i'm actually currently in the parking lot of a michael's craft store my entire life is just a mess but i have entertainment and um nobody warned me when i started this book that there'd be at least a hundred pages if not more where one of the two main characters one of the boys on the cover simply wouldn't show up he's just he's not a character however it is incredibly hilarious that simon's just like, I'm worried about my roommate. Not because I like him or anything. He's terrible and I hate him and he's awful. I'm thinking about him constantly because I hate him. Obviously. Simon, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. Also, the fact that the spells are just like regular old phrases and sometimes song lyrics. Like, okay. Simon Snow just got dumped by his girlfriend and literally on page 145, he utters the phrase, I'm just lying in my bed thinking about Baz. Priorities, my boy. Priorities. I I will go into the store eventually, in case you're wondering. I just am slightly too into these idiots. And also, it's raining, so I have a good excuse to just sit here in my car and be a menace to society instead of sitting in my room and being a menace to myself. So... You know, I honestly have to say all this stuff with Baz being a vampire is bringing me back to my Carmilla phase. I don't know if anyone else watched Carmilla. I mean, I know other people watched it, but I don't know if anyone who's watching this video watched Carmilla. It was a web series about a vampire at a college campus. And at one point, like deep, deep into the first season, like the main character has been speculating, like, I think Carmilla's a vampire. Maybe she's a vampire. And at one point their friend comes up and is just like, I mean, she's a vampire. We know that, right? Like, we've known that since that incident in episode three, right? Like, vampire? Yeah? We all knew that, right? <laughs> and that's basically what it feels like reading this book. Like, Simon's like, he, he's a vampire. He sneaks off into the catacombs, and he's mysterious, and I never see him eat. Like, yeah. Yeah, he's a vampire. That's... Yeah. Okay, so I did eventually get into the store and buy what I needed, and then some things that I didn't need... They put out the Halloween stuff, I couldn't help myself. But, back to this. Right before I went in the store, I noticed that Baz has only been calling Simon Snow, his last name for the entire book. And I was thinking like, oh man, there's gonna be a moment where in like the heat of the moment or like a passionate confession of feelings, he's gonna call him Simon. And no, Simon just straight up tells him like, dude, call me Simon. And he's like, okay. You know, oddly enough, I don't see this book on a lot of enemies to lovers lists, but this is literally like the textbook definition. Like they hate each other, try to murder each other a bunch of times, and now they're just like saying stuff like, I've never turned my back on you and I won't do it now. Like, hello? I mean, I love their dynamic. They're just idiots. Like they could have been together this whole time if they weren't just so stupid. To be quite honest with you all, I keep forgetting what the plot is supposed to be. Like I know that Simon's the chosen one and that 
the maid just being shady and there's the whole thing with Baz's mom and then there's the chapters from Lucy's point of view but like I think I'm really only invested in solving the case of Baz's mom's death because honestly everything else is kind of like eh whatever. I do love that dynamic though the fact that Baz's mom came to Simon to deliver the message like that is just intense. I love how <laughs> Penelope and Agatha were so uninvolved in all of it and then just got dragged in against their will. It, it, it's kind of hilarious. It's like ah oh, yes my best friend and my ex and this guy that I'm in love with but I'm denying it because I'm just so so stupid. Like what a dream team to solve a mystery honestly. <laughs> Done with book one. So overall, I gave this book four stars. I wasn't into it for a good long chunk at the beginning because it's like, what's happening? Is there a plot? One of the main characters isn't here. This is boring. What's going on? And then of course, some plot began to happen. Basically, was this a revolutionary book that I was like so upset about putting off for years and years that I can't believe I waited so long to read? No. Was it essentially dreary fanfic? Yeah, a vampire AU basically. Did I still enjoy it? Of course. I give it four stars. I laughed out loud many, many times. I had a hard time picking what quote to tweet because every time I read a book, I tweet a quote from that book along with my star rating to keep track of my TBR this year. And I had a hard time picking one because they were all hilarious. I enjoyed this. I had a good time. It was fun. Obviously, the romance between Simon and Baz is a highlight, but also Penelope just as a character is great. I'm not too fond of Agatha, but I suppose she's not terrible. I finally did it. It only took me like four or five years of owning the book to actually read it, but I did it. So Carry On by Rainbow Rowell is finally checked off of my TBR. Four star read, and now there's two more. Yay! It's book two time. So basically what I'm getting from this art on the inside and from, oh, that's cute. And from the synopsis, um, this book is the everybody lives and goes on a vacation together after the events of the series, fluffy AU fanfic, except it's not a fanfic because it's the book, but also this entire series is glorified fanfiction. So it's fanfiction of the fanfiction. It's a domestic road trip story apparently. It's the shortest book in the series. I will probably finish it tonight if I'm being totally honest with myself. Um, it looks like it's literally just gonna be a fun little romp of oh look at these characters having fun. Watch that be misleading and watch me get my feelings hurt because this book's gonna throw something at me. It's gonna be like haha you thought this was a domestic fun little story. No, here comes heartbreak. Hopefully that's not the case. Considering how thick this boy is, I'm assuming that either this is just a fun intermission or it's actually setting up for there to be more plot. We shall see. As you can see, we are starting with an epilogue. So right away, it's like, ooh, dark, edgy, mysterious. This is a different book. Everything is a story and Simon Snows is over. Wow. You can't start a book like that when the synopsis literally just told me that it was going to be a fun, wholesome road trip story. JK, I was right about the plot. Apparently the plot is Simon has depression. Oh yeah, see this book is for sure gonna bring up some angst because 14 pages in in one of Penelope's POVs she says Simon killed the mage, the closest thing he'd ever had to a father. And that made me realize Simon doesn't know that the mage is his father. Or like anything about the reason why he had magic. Mm. So fun fact, sometimes I actually have to read while I'm at work or doing things that I can't actually film so I can't just give my candid reactions to things as I'm sitting and reading and sometimes when I'm talking to you all here in the video it's actually been days after I read it and I simply went and put the same clothes back on and pretended that it was the same day but it totally wasn't. Anyway, thoughts so far. One of the notes I wrote to myself was, oh lord they're all disasters, which is true. Every single character in this is a complete and utter human disaster. I mean, Agatha's obviously being incited into a cult. Simon and Baz can't figure out how to be in a relationship, even though they're already doing it without any effort. If they think about it too hard, they're like, wait, this is wrong. Penelope doesn't know what she's doing in life, which mood. And then we're introduced to Shep, who seems like he's going to be a saving grace. He's so intelligent. He knows so much about magic. Oh no, it's just because he's been getting himself into terrible situations with magical creatures and is just 
so inappropriately sweet at all the wrong times and oh boy this is just a disaster group of children to pick up and just plop into america also the fact that penelope was like we can't just drive from chicago to california it's gonna take three days like my girl my sweet sweet idiot <laughs> You're so smart, but oof, you missed the mark on that one. Baj just went on for literally an entire chapter talking about how much he hates Illinois. And as someone who was born and raised in Illinois, I can't even be offended. That's fair. They're at the Hoover Dam. I have to do it. I have to make the damn snack bar joke. Shep's talking to a water dryad in the Hoover Dam. She would be a shame if she needed some snacks because it's the middle of the night, so the damn snack bar is closed. Percy Jackson will forever have a vice grip on my life and I am not ashamed of that. Okay, so remember how I talked about in my least favorite romantic tropes video that miscommunication is my least favorite romantic trope or one of my least favorites? Yeah, this book is killing me because Simon's like, I'm not a good boyfriend. I don't know how to be a boyfriend and Baz is like, I've never been in a relationship before. Simon's pulling away. I don't know why. And if the two of them would just talk to each other, it would solve everything. There would be no more problems. Everything would be fine, but no, no, we can't talk about feelings. This is a young adult novel. We have to cause problems on purpose by not doing the simplest thing, which is just communicating with each other. Talking about feelings, that's too hard. Let's just like pseudo break up and fight constantly and never be on the same page because that's easier than just salvaging a relationship using your words. I signed up for a fun, fluffy, road trip AU, waste of a middle book, and instead I have the main couple fighting all the time and vampires murdering everybody and then another character getting kidnapped into a cult. I, I, hi, synopsis? Yes, you're full of lies. I mean, okay, so the synopsis does say they find trouble, of course, dragons, vampires, skunk-headed things with shotguns, and they get lost. They get so lost, they wonder if they ever knew where they were headed in the first place. Okay, okay, fine. The synopsis warned me. I did not listen. I just wanted a fluffy, nice little road trip AU. Is that so much to ask? Apparently. The good thing about this one is that it's super short and so I will thankfully finish it in just like one or two sittings instead of carry on which took me way too freaking long to get through. Bez Grim Pitch, I swear to god. Go ahead and shoot me, this isn't my favorite shirt. Honey, your priorities, where are they? I... And of course there's trouble at Watford. We can't leave the book on a happy note. It has to be a cliffhanger which is so great that I already have the third one here because that would have made me very, very frustrated. So this was a couple hundred pages of stuff. Um, the general consensus I see from the fandom is that this isn't everyone's favorite book and I'm going to agree on that. Uh, didn't really care for the lack of everything happening, but I mean, at least we got Shep. Honestly, he's the saving grace of this book and I'm hoping to see more of him in the next one. So hopefully that's like a nice thing. I'm sorry, I just got distracted by this fan art in the back that I pointed out was really cute before, but I'm realizing that this is obviously not the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It's the small one from Las Vegas. Okay, all right. Well, let's start this puppy. Let's go. So I decided today to come and read outside. Unfortunately, in public, as you can see from the cars and people walking behind me. We are on to book three. And I actually started reading book three like an hour ago, sitting at Starbucks, but there were a lot of conversations happening around me. So I was just awkwardly like, I'm not gonna talk to my camera right now. I'm being judged. So now I'm sitting alone where no one can judge me. And obviously, since this book is pretty new, it's the newest of the three. I am going to give a warning for spoilers here. I will be talking about some details of this book. I probably will try my best to avoid giving like, huge spoilers, but I will be giving my reactions to Things. So if you haven't read the third book in the Simon Snow trilogy, maybe click away, come back to this reading vlog once you've finished it, or at least like if you hear me about to say something that you think might be a spoiler, like plug your ears or something, I don't know. I can't stop you from watching, but I might spoil this for you if I haven't read it already, so. You know how sometimes you eat and then you just get really sleepy, like it hits you, you didn't think you were tired, but you're like, wow, I'm tired. Anyway, yeah, so I'm back home now, but I did get about this far, this is the top. So that far into Wayward Sun, that's about Wayward Sun. This is Any Way the Wind Blows. I'm not singing Kansas, I'm singing Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, I'm on page 108 
which is great for me. So I did get a decent amount in before I needed a food break and then subsequently got very, very sleepy. But I did do a fun little backyard photo shoot before I got super sleepy. But um, now the book was just starting to get good. I was just getting frustrated with Simon and Baz not communicating with each other, but then they actually started communicating and like my spirit was lifted. I was like, oh my gosh, they can talk to each other. So yeah, um, hold for a moment. If the lighting changes in the next clip, it's because I fell asleep. So the lighting didn't change, but makeup's gone now because I took a nap. Anyway, um, we're about halfway there now. There's some excellent ship teas happening between Penelope and Shep, which I'm very much enjoying. Love that for them. Simon's getting closer and closer to figuring out that he has like family who's alive, which is great. That's like really all I care about plot wise right now. There's nothing else like I, there's no other plot happening. Like, yeah, they're trying to get rid of Shep's demon curse. That's one thing, but like the plot, Simon and Baz related like the only plot they have is to figure out that Simon's you know maybe not an orphan and like has a grandmother and an uncle and maybe his mom's somewhere out there he could still communicate with her is she like behind the veil or whatever but yeah like we're making some progress I'm not bored anymore which is great hello and welcome to car time I am getting takeout because I don't feel like being in public again today because I've already spent too many hours in public and also as I'm driving I will make um comment on the reason why I don't want to read in public, which is that this book is a little spicier than the last two. Again, I'm only halfway through, so I haven't seen like exactly how far it's going to go, but there's much more adult language and reference to just like more adult things happening in the romance. The characters are college age, they're in their 20s, so like the first two books had none of that. It was just like a couple kiss scenes here and there and like some mild petting, but um, there's a certain word I've encountered three times already on the page that is um, referencing a body part that I'm not going to say because I would like this video to not get demonetized. Just be aware, the, the series does eventually get there. It's not super, super graphic or anything, at least not at the halfway point that I'm at currently, but I did bring the book with me because I have a feeling that my estimated time on getting my takeout is a little optimistic and that I am probably going to be waiting here in the parking lot for a little bit. I'll sit and read until it, one gets too spicy for me to be sitting in a parking lot at a restaurant reading or two until my food gets here. I was right. Uh, my order is going to take a second. So where am I? Ah uh, yes, Simon and Baz are at the cult meeting. Ah uh, yes, we've reached that time once again. The time in the reading vlog in which I simply do not care anymore, which I have dubbed comfy mode. I'm in my pajamas and the day is over and this is honestly how I do most of my reading is laying in bed at night. We are still making progress. I realized in my clip when I was driving to get dinner earlier, I, I just mentioned the cult stuff and then didn't elaborate on that whatsoever. Basically at this point in the book, I'm on chapter 52, there are two main plots. There is the Simon and Baz plot in which there is this uprising of a new chosen one since Simon has obviously been debunked as the chosen one from the prophecy in the first book there's all these new people coming out of the woodwork saying like oh i'm the chosen one i can grant people magic i can do this i can do that and a lot of them just seem like cult leaders so that was the cult stuff that i was talking about they're tracking down this guy who is saying that he's the new chosen one trying to figure out what his deal is and then the second plot is penelope and shep and penelope is trying to help shep break his curse which was revealed at the end of the second book which i don't even think i elaborated on much when i was talking about the second book it's a whole thing um but yes so there's those two plots and there's like an underlying third plot like branching off of the Simon Baz plot where Simon's basically figuring out his family history without actually figuring it out because he's just like learning all these details about these random people but these random people as we know from reading the first book is like you know his mom and dad. At this point in the book I feel like I know who all these characters are except for this one down here. No idea who this person is. Obviously that is Simon, Baz, Penelope, Shep, and Agatha. Who are you? I want to say this is um, a new character who was introduced whose name is I know a common Irish name but it's a name that I'm not going to say right on the first try and now I'm going to google it and um, make my computer say it because I don't want to say it wrong. We are looking at how to pronounce Neve. Neve, yes. yes. See, I've been saying Neve in my head. It's N I A M H, and I've been saying Neve in my head, but I was like, is that correct? Did I make that up? No, I didn't. I was right. 
I want to say that's Neve because she and Agatha also have this plot that I'm just so uninterested in but they're like herding the goats at Watford so since the goats next to them I'm gonna guess that's Neve but I didn't it, who's to say really anyway yeah so that's where we are at this moment. It's so funny that this book is diving pretty deep into Simon's family backstory plot because that's really all I wanted out of book two. We got like nothing out of it. And then immediately like page seven of this book was like, oh, by the way, let's bring up Simon's entire family that he still doesn't know exists. <laughs> took you long enough then again I it's not like I waited I've read this entire trilogy in a couple days so sorry to the fans in like 2017 who wanted to know about this stuff you were patient congrats I was not I waited till the third book was out to pick it up go me I guess and you know aside from Simon being the textbook definition of an anxious attachment style and Baz just being fed up they're Domesticity is really cute, like the way Baz is like, yeah, I totally gave Simon my football jersey on purpose because I wanted to see him wear my name and my number on his back. Like, how cute is that? Like, that's, that's precious. That's adorable. And as adorable as that is, I really still am more interested in Penelope and Shep's storyline at this point, so... We'll see where that goes. Honestly, if nothing else, this book is just emotional whiplash because one second you're like, oh, poor Simon and Baz and their relationship troubles. Oh, poor Shep and his curse. And then Simon will utter something like, if you can't be gay at Ikea, where can you? And Baz will respond, was this the best day of my life? I'm nearly certain. And you're just like, <laughs> what am I reading? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so I finished it. I was hoping to finish Anyway the Wind Blows last night, but then the sleepy got to me again. And so as you just saw, I woke up this morning and decided to finish out those last hundred or so pages. And now I can officially say I have read the Simon Snow Trilogy by Rainbow Rowell. So my thoughts. Book one is definitely the best. I mean, from what I can tell about this series, just like reading her author's notes and kind of seeing how it progressed, it was meant to be a standalone and then extended into a trilogy. And that kind of shows in the storytelling in general, but I am glad the series went on long enough to close up a few plot holes that opened up in the first book and then weren't really resolved until book three. Overall, honestly, overall it was a fun series. I don't regret reading through it. Simon and Baz obviously are just got idiots but in the best way and although I didn't care for Agatha's character too much I did eventually end up having Penelope grow on me and then of course Shep is just great he's wonderful the pacing's a bit weird obviously it's like all of this plot weird road trip interlude cult stuff but then we finally end up closing up plot holes that opened up here and then finally closed here which was slightly frustrating but at least we got there like it could have just ended with the first book and we never got any kind of closure but we got a little bit of closure we got a little bit of optimism some magic some romance overall my ranking of the enjoyment of the books is one, three, two, which I think a lot of people will agree with me on that. It was a fun time. There are still some things that didn't really get wrapped up or closed off, like, at all, which is annoying. But then again, this is, um, you know, a vampire aged up AU dreary fanfic disguised as a story within a story. So like, I can't have too many complaints, you know? So thank you all so much for coming along with me on my journey as I read the Simon Snow trilogy. If you've also read the series, let me know what you think. I'd love to chat with you all about it. That's all for me this week. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.